Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about stochastic and multideterministic depth conversion, which is a technique used in geophysics and interpreting seismic data to provide you for volumes and risks in oil and gas exploration and development. So, what is depth conversion? Why do we need to depth convert? So, this is just a basic overview. Basically, what it is, is seismic data is recorded in time domain. So, it works a little bit like sonar. So, you've got the source bouncing a wave into the ground gets reflected at uh, interfaces of different types of rock. Um, the waves then come back up uh, to the surface to be recorded by sensors, in this particular case, it's marine sensors, uh, hydrophones, and then loads of complicated processing, you produce a time domain image. An image is in time domain, i.e. the vertical scale is in seconds. But that's not really that great for everyone else because we need it in depth, or meters or feet on the side. And that's done by multiplying the time map by a velocity model to produce a depth map. So uh, we need to have a velocity model and we need to have various different types of velocity models. The depth conversion technique works like this. So this is a brief overview. So you have a time domain interpretation, you have analysis of your velocities, you then do an initial depth conversion, tie that to any existing wells to make sure that everything fits all the data, various QCs and sensitivities, and at the end of that you get a final depth domain model, which you can use to calculate your reserves, estimate your chances of success, etc., etc., etc. So that's how that's done. Now, in terms of depth conversion models, they can be as simple or as complex as you need them to be. And there's a lot of things you need to consider. You know, what's the available data that you have? Do you just have some seismic velocities? Do you have well data? Do you have check shots, VSBs, etc.? How complex is the overburden? If it's a simple uh, system where you've got uh, mud rocks uh, that basically increase velocity with depth due to compaction, yeah, that's easy. What happens if you've got layers of, let's say, limestone or chalk, which are normally high, high velocities, or evaporites such as salt and hydride, etc., which also have normally high velocities? Again, getting those in there would mean a more complicated velocity model to fit the data. And then name of your interpretation. Do you want a basic uh, regional scale overview? Are you looking at developing a field, selecting development well locations, need far finer quantifications, and the time that you have available to do it? So in order to, to carry this out successfully, you need effective framing because there is no single ideal answer. So these are different depth conversion methods. Now I run a course on depth conversion, which I can explain these in a lot more detail to you if you wish to do that. Um, and you basically have two types. You have the different deterministic methods, which go in level of complexity, difficulty, time, and costs, everything from basic average velocities through P0K functions, uh, multi-layer functions using seismic velocities, pre-stack depth migration velocity models, etc. Um, or you can go stochastic, which is where you do a whole multiplicity of different cases around one method, which is what I'll be talking about mostly today. Now, a deterministic model gives you one answer, single sample question using one method. Now, for some situations, that's just perfectly fine. But you don't know what the uncertainty level is. You don't know where the model falls in the distribution curve. You know, it could be an N member. You just don't know, unless you have several models. And you don't know how wide the distribution curve is. So stochastic methods enable you to quantify this, enable you to impact uncertainty of the velocity model, on resource volumes in oil and gas fields. How much have we got? Can we make the right decision, selecting the right concept, placing the wells in the right places? Now, within a stochastic situation, you use one method and you run many cases within that using different types of parameter variability, using the technique called Kriegen, which I'll talk a little bit about in a minute. Now, there are several software suites that can do this. For example, Velet, which um, I think is uh, now part of the Kingdom suite. It was developed by ERC Equipoise. Um, that do it, and they're very, so there's relatively niche bits of software. And there's some companies that do it. So, for example, ERC Equipoise and Earthworks have done stochastic depth conversion products for me in my uh, professional life, and both done excellent jobs. Typically, you would vary a single parameter. So, let's say in a V0K function, you would vary the, the V0 in a stochastic way using Kriegen. Generally, you'd run about 100 realizations. Sometimes you can run more, but you get diminishing returns after a while. And then you can rank them in order. 
And you can produce things like uncertainty and isoprobability maps, which uh, can be really useful in field appraisal. And I'll talk a little bit about those in a second. So Krieging is the method uh, that they use uh, to stochastically vary it. Um, it's uh, quite complicated. Effectively, you get sampled values. So this is a Krieg curve, spline curve of different uh, samples and different realizations using a, th uh, a factor called a semivariogram, uh, which gives you the spatial constraint. And um, the sill, when the model flattens out, range, uh, distances, nuggets, etc. Now, people can explain Krieg a bit uh, better than I can, but what you end up with is a set of different surfaces like this, which can then be output as a final model, and you can then compare them. Now, all these different models fit well data. So this is, you can imagine, a boxer with a skipping rope. So the hands of the boxer are still, but the skipping rope moves up and down uh, relative to that. So the wells would be perfectly tied, but all these different scenario cases would be varying with that around that. And so this is a cross section. That's a potential for hydrocarbon water contact. And you can see how the different cases would affect the potential volume. When you've got all your cases out, all the different cases, you can then rank them as a histogram. So you can calculate the volumes and you can see what your distribution range is. Now, if for sake of argument, your minimum economic volume is 160 million barrels for this particular type of development, well, you've got a little bit of uncertainty here. So maybe you might want to do an appraisal well to try to eliminate these particular low cases out. Or if you are in that case, then you can sell the, uh, the particular development to someone else who may have different uh, uh, thresholds for developing. So that's a, one of the useful byproducts to so have a histogram of uh, volumetric outputs. You also have uh, things called isoprobability and uncertainty maps. So an isoprobability map is the chance of you having a value at any particular point on the map above a threshold such as a contact. So let's say here is a zero line, so everything outside this zero line. Your values uh, will be uh, depth values will be below your contact, therefore you will not have hydrocarbons in here. Whereas everything within here, the red line, the one line, would be above the, the contact and all realizations. And then you have variability. So that's the median line. So half the realizations are above and half the realizations are below here. You can also have an uncertainty line. So uncertainty is zero at the wells, and you can have relative low uncertainty, in this case five meters. This is a made up map. Then you have 25 meters again around the well points. And then you have 70 meters away from the wells because obviously your uncertainty increases away from points of control. So again, using your realizations, you can find out where your uncertainty areas are, and then you can focus further geological and geophysical work to try to reduce the uncertainties and try to eliminate them. All very good. But what are the pitfalls of stochastic depth conversion? Well, first of all, it's a specialist technique and can be seen as black box. And quite often you can hand over to a velocity model, a specialist that does it either a specialist in your company, an external specialist. And some people just say, say now nah, get on with it, Fred. Now, Fred might be able to do a very good job, but if you don't talk to Fred on a fairly frequent basis, he can go off on all sorts of tangents. So you need to work very closely with Fred. Are you sampling the full range? Particularly if you're varying a single parameter that's being modeled, um, such as a conversion factor to fit seismic velocities to a single layer than a single layer, are you covering everything? Have you picked the right layer for uncertainty to look at? Okay, food for thought. There could also be some results that Fred will come out with that might be geologically improbable. So, for instance, you might have depth maps that look significantly different from time maps. Now, okay, that can be popped up in a QC. Uh, model uh, but uh, you know that's something to look out for you could have spill points in some realizations that are significantly above or below the hydrocarbon water contact which again looks geologically improbable you'd want them all around that area so you can try to exclude those results from the from the output so you need a fair amount of quality control another thing that happened to me with the stochastic depth conversion was a, a, this a field in the north sea had some horizontal wells and the initial set of results, some of the realizations had the horizontal wells poking out the side of the reservoir. So a well was coming in an L shape and then poking out the side, uh, but that didn't happen in reality. So I talked to the, uh, the person that was doing the work. We rejigged some of the parameters and then all realizations fitted all the wells. And you'll need to run some deterministic cases just to see how they fit into stochastic distribution. Have we got everything quite right? 
Again, useful tool, but you need to be aware of the pitfalls. So another way of looking at it is a way that I occasionally would use. It's called multi-deterministic. So you effectively use several different methods to produce different depth maps. And using a gridding package in software, you can produce minimum, mean, and maximum, deepest, shallowest, and average maps. And that can give you a wider range of cases. You can also do lesser probability and uncertainty maps with those. So to give you an example, we got a four-layer problem. So that's your datum, layer one layer two, layer three, and then the target. And you've got these different methods. So you can produce a whole bunch of different methods. So A1, XD, etc. So A1, XD, C3, Z, D, etc. So that gives you an representative method. So what I can come up with is these different methods here. So this is a cross section of the made up field. That's your well, we have zero variability and these all th different methods vary. They're consistent within each other, but they do vary. And what you can do here is you take averages, minimums, and maximums to produce a set of averages, minimums, and maximums. And your line here is your variability, which then gives you an idea of what can possibly happen. You can also use that to produce size of probability maps, uh, threshold maps, etc and volumetric histograms from all the different uh, units. And that will give you a wider range than just pure stochastic, although it does take a bit more work. So to summarize, a stochastic approach will acknowledge the, that the uncertainties in depth conversion will try to quantify them. It gives you many useful products, size of probability, uncertainty maps, volumetric histograms, and perhaps it may give you a bit of complacent set of uh, complacency, but that you think you've got it all really covered, but maybe you haven't. So that's why looking at something like multi-deterministic might be more useful as well, because that gives you an idea of where the big uncertainties really are. It can be black box, particularly if you hand it on to a specialist to do the work for you. But if you work closely together with a specialist, that can uh, overcome some of the pitfalls. But the key question is here, are you focusing on modeling the key parameters? So doing the basic work, building your velocity model, looking at where the biggest uncertainties are, and focusing on those is the key. So thank you very much. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. And if you want to know more, please have a look at some of my courses, and I'll be looking forward to helping you with any of your depth conversion problems. Thank you very much.